Hello and welcome back to the Dividend Experiment, the channel that can help you build a sustainable dividend portfolio. The content that will be discussed is intended for information and educational purposes only and should not be considered investment advice or investment recommendation. In today's video we're going to address the latest company on the Is It Time To Buy series. Remember if you want a company to be submitted to the Is It Time To Buy series and be the next video made then you can add it to the list on the post in the members area if you click on that join button right next to subscribe down there. The reason I've made it members only submission is just because of the number of requests meant it wasn't fair that I couldn't have time to make all of them so now it's on a priority submission basis but videos will always be available for everyone to watch on the channel. As always these videos aren't a recommendation to carry out any activity whether buy, sell or hold but I'm just giving my thoughts and can serve as a basis for your own due diligence. In today's video we're going to take a deeper look at National Grid, ticker symbol NG, listed on the London Stock Exchange. Like the ones we've been looking at recently, this is a nice one listed closer to home this time on the London Stock Exchange and that means we neither pay with holding tax nor the Trading 212 or Free Trade Currency Exchange fee as it's listed in pounds. So what type of company is National Grid PLC? National Grid PLC transmits and distributes electricity and, nat and natural gas. The UK electricity transmission segment owns and operates electricity transmission networks, which comprise approximately 7,000 kilometres of overhead lines. The UK gas transmission segment owns and operates gas transmission systems, as well as third-party independent systems and liquefied natural gas (LNG) storage facilities. The US regulated segment owns and operates transmission facilities across upstate New York, Massachusetts, New Hampshire, Rhode Island and Vermont and electricity distribution networks in those places. The NGV and other segment engages in the energy metering business, transporting renewable energy long distances through its electricity interconnectors and storing LNG as well as commercial property and insurance activities in the United Kingdom. The company was founded in 1990 and is headquartered in London, the United Kingdom. In a snapshot, here are the key dividend facts about the company. At the time of writing, National Grid was trading at 942 pence. National Grid has a current dividend yield of about 5.22%. National Grid's dividend at 5.22% is in the top 25% of dividend payers in the UK market, which is limited at 3.1%. National Grid's debt to equity ratio at 157.6% is considered high, however they've been reducing and trending in the right direction over the past 5 years as it's fallen from 222.9%. Rules. Now that we've seen what the company does, its dividend information snapshot, let's check out the new rules of the dividend experiment and see if the company is a good fit for the dividend experiment. If you're not familiar with the rules, then I've made a video with an overview of each rule and that video can be found in one of the early videos in this Is It Time To Buy series playlist. If I remember, I'll also add a card direct to the video at the top right hand corner of this video. If I don't remember and you can't find it, let me know in the comments. Ok, let's go through the rules. Rule number 1, the company pays a dividend or is likely to pay in the immediate term. National Grid pays a dividend at present and it pays out twice per year with a final and interim payment. This isn't my ideal payout schedule, especially when the interim and final dividend payments are differing in their size. For example, the most recent interim payment for National Grid was 17 pence whereas the final was much higher, almost double in fact, over 32 pence. This obviously makes it harder to plan the income, but it's not a deal breaker and it's basically irrelevant once you have a few more dividend payers balancing it all out. Obviously I'd prefer monthly or quarterly payers, but I can't really complain with a solid payment like this. If you remember the video and the earlier video in the series, I talk about looking for a yield between 3 to 8%, and this is comfortably within that range, and roughly at the middle at 5.22%, with no withholding tax remember, so no issue there so far. National Grid passes the first rule very comfortably, let's see how it does with the rest. Rule 2. The company is a natural dividend payer judging from its industry or business model. National Grid is in the utility sector and the industry is regulated electricity to be precise. This is a dream sector to find natural dividend payers, the companies tend to be natural monopolies and they're regulated and therefore protected from competitors by the government. On top of this, the need for their products are very inelastic. National Grid makes its money from energy transport rather than being directly affected by prices themselves, so that business model is advantageous when it comes to becoming a natural dividend payer. Distribution companies charge suppliers for using the network. Suppliers then pass this cost on to consumers through the standing charge on your energy bills, so the revenue should, in theory, be relatively stable. 
Looking at the last three years on Yahoo Finance, we can see that the total revenue has been pretty consistent, and this makes it far easier for management to plan a dividend or shareholder compensation strategy. So an easy pass for National Grid for a Rule 2. Rule 3. The company should be a top player in its industry. I always like to pull up the Guru Focus chart for Rule 3, and we can take a look at how National Grid fits into the regulated utilities market, and who are its competitors in the UK and Ireland. So a pretty impressive market leader, with 48% of market cap of all competitors, so that's almost half the market taken up by National Grid. The next biggest is SSE PLC, which takes up almost a quarter, and then these are followed by water utilities, which aren't real or true competitors anyway. When the market is so regulated and the company is a natural monopoly, it's fairly straightforward to see that the company will become a top player quite easily. That being said, National Grid operates in the US and is listed in both the US and UK, so it could be the case that this adds to its market cap somewhat. Either way, it's a pass for rule number three. Rule four, aim to buy the company at a historically great price. National Grid is poor value based on its PE ratio at 20.2x, compared to the European Integrated Utilities Industry Average, which is 15.7x. That being said, it's good value based on its PE ratio compared to the UK market at 23.4x. And it might be the case that you could get better value looking at other utilities at the moment, if you are specifically after a utility, but it's not exactly bad value for a UK company. Looking at the five-year average dividend yield on Yahoo Finance, the dividend yield is pretty much the same as it has been for the past five years, so this isn't a historically great price, but pretty much a historically average price. Therefore, you wouldn't be buying great value, but you wouldn't be going wrong with it either. If you're interested in the price to book value at 1.7x, it's in line with the industry average, so again, you're a pretty average price right now. Rule 5. The company is growing and innovating even as it matures. National Grid is one of the companies that is not in any immediate danger of disruption. I would guess the biggest chance it would have its market share taken from it would be if batteries became vastly bigger in capacity and easier to store and transport, but I'm not aware of any such developments at present, but it would be good to hear from you if you know anything along these lines. National Grid's strategy for innovation mainly revolves around future-proofing the business, and like all companies in the energy and energy adjacent sector, this involves sustainable or renewable energy in some shape or form. National Grid's main focus for innovation is its commitment to net zero carbon emissions. Their projects include decarbonising their own operations and have worked on projects investigating ways to eliminate greenhouse gases from their gas insulated equipment, replacing diesel generators with low carbon alternatives for backup at their substations, and reducing their carbon footprint in relation to their construction work. Their UK gas transmission business continues to lead the research on transitioning to a hydrogen future. Their hydrogen program includes hydrogen de-blending, allowing for the separation of hydrogen in a natural gas mix, and they've been working with the Institute of Gas Engineers and Managers to overhaul the gas technical standards to meet hydrogen specifications, as well as securing funding to build a hydrogen test facility from decommissioned assets. Nothing truly exciting or revolutionary here, but I don't think we expected much from a company like this, it's doing its main job and aiming to protect its assets and cash flow rather than shake up the entire industry. We can give a pass for this one based on these expectations as the company seems to be moving in a generally positive direction. However, if you are thinking of investing in National Grid, this is one area that may be worth looking further into. Rule 6. The company is a sustainable dividend payer. National Grid is in quite a predicament in regards to its payout ratio as it's over 100% of its earnings. This means that National Grid is actually paying out more of a dividend than it's making in profit, so it must either be borrowing to pay or paying out from retained earnings from an earlier time period. Obviously, neither of these are good options, and this is a big red flag that puts it as a fail for the sustainable dividend. Things are looking up, however, as the three-year analyst projection is a little better at 77%. Utilities are typically higher payout ratios, as the cash flow is typically high and the capex can be financed with debt or structured differently, so there's little opportunity cost to higher payouts. I prefer 75% payout ratio as a top limit though, so 77% is still a little high. Rule 7. The company has a history of payments. National Grid has had a dividend history of 12 years, and over that time the payments have been stable and in general increasing, although not the consecutive increases that would be required for dividend aristocrat status. This is good, but ideally we'd like to have seen payments over the financial crisis, especially as a utility, but a strong 10-year period is still pretty good. 
National Grid can get a pass for rule number seven. Rule eight, the company must have a strong moat. On the dividend experiment, these types of companies are just so great for income because the license required to operate as a regulated utility is restrictive, preventing competitors, and the costs of setting up are prohibitively high. This makes National Grid a natural monopoly and its moat is protected on multiple levels. Ofgem, or Office of Gas and Electricity Markets, is the regulator in the UK as long as National Grid does not fall foul of its objectives, then a reasonable profit can be made and it can be protected from competition. These objectives or priorities are to enable investment in low carbon infrastructure at a fair price, to deliver full chain flexibility in how they generate, use and store energy, to deliver a future retail market that works for all consumers and the planet, to unlock the benefits of data and digitalization, and finally to ensure energy system governance, including Ofgem, a fit for the future. Nothing too out there or difficult, especially as National Grid's goals align with Ofgem's. The regulatory environment can be a double-edged sword though, as regulators have the final say over National Grid's profit potential. Ofgem has been a thorn in National Grid's side lately, as it prepares the UK's grid for a surge in electricity needs. The regulatory body recently recommended that National Grid separate itself completely from managing the grid that it owns to prevent a conflict of interest and ultimately keep electricity costs manageable for the British public. Summary and verdict. National Grid is a great example of the kind of company that the dividend experiment intends to seek out, but the payout ratio is just a little too high and combining that with an above market yield of 5.22%, it may be the case that management reduced the dividend slightly to ease the pressure on the earnings going forward. I don't think they'll halt the dividend or cut completely, but wouldn't be surprised to see an adjustment, as the payout ratio is uncomfortably high from a shareholder perspective, especially when considering the high levels of debt they have already. With this in mind, I think it's not a huge rush to sell at present, as the dividend cut wouldn't be severe, but I would not look to be buying until the payout ratio is reduced to comfortable levels. It may be the case that price falls when the dividend is cut, which would be a good time to get into it, and we could take another look then, but for now it's just a hold, but keep an eye out for a better opportunity to get in. No significant insider transactions that we can draw any conclusions from in the last 12 months. The CEO, John Pettigrew, bought about £2,000 worth at the end of August, but that must just be pocket change for him, no indication of anything to come. What do you think of National Grid? Perhaps it suits your investing style. Leave your comments and thoughts below, I always really like to see what you guys think. If you think the dividend experiment is interesting, I need you to do four things. First, hit that subscribe button and the bell so you can stay informed for every video and update. I'll be making a whole range of videos that should help you in your journey to build a sustainable dividend portfolio. Second, use the link in the description to head over to eToro to see how the dividend experiment is going right now, live, and you can even join along if you like too. Third, if you're a new investor, I highly recommend the Dividend Academy. Completely free to join and gives you bite-sized lessons to get started investing. With none of that nonsense that others try and sell you for sky-high fees. Finally, open up a brokerage and get started building a sustainable dividend portfolio. I have some that I recommend in the description and some will even give you a free share just to start you off. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you on the next video. See ya.